Testing, testing. Right, hi guys. So, as you can see, it's quite windy today. It's definitely not drone flying weather, really. Uh, but you can see everything's just blowing around everywhere. And this is, <laughs> I always decide, I know, let's go and take some photos of bugs and bees and flowers and things like that. And it's kind of a difficult situation because everything's just moving all the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go walk down to those bushes there, which have got some white flowers on. And uh, we're gonna try and capture some of those because they should give us a little bit of shelter. And the sun is out and uh, there should still be some bees and things flying around. So hopefully we can uh, capture some good stuff. But it is quite a bit windier than it was yesterday. And I already filmed this once and uh, the light was absolutely terrible. It was, it was really cloudy. But the wind is about 10 miles an hour more than it was. As you can see, all of the flowers and everything in the, and the grasses and everything are just moving around loads. So a little bit of a difficult situation, but let's try and find somewhere sheltered and uh, we can go from there really. So I'm filming up today on the Sony A1. I've got my microphone on and I'm actually using the 14 to 24 uh, Sigma f2.8 dgdn or dndg uh, lens really love that lens i've not really used it that much but i thought you know what let's get it out uh, as you can see it is quite windy um, got bits of blossom flying everywhere but i brought the rx10 out rx10 is one hell of a camera if you've never seen this before but a lot of you uh, follow me due to this this camera if you want an all-in-one fabulous bit of kit that pretty much can do 95% of everything that you'd ever want to be able to do. Here is it. It was originally 1800 quid to buy. It's now about 1350, I think, something like that without looking. So it's got a 24 to 600 equivalent uh, zoom lens. Uh, F4 being its uh, fastest aperture at 600. So we've got a 600 F4 basically. Smaller sensor, but that actually gives you a little bit more depth naturally. So in some respects, that's actually good because we can shoot F4 and actually have roughly the same depth as if you were shooting at sort of F11 or thereabouts. So in some, some respects, it's actually better than having an F4 600 mil on a full frame because you, you, know, you can shoot F4 and actually get enough uh, depth, which is really, really handy. Quite often I stop down to F5.6 just to go for a little bit extra and uh, it's, it's just a fantastic bit of kit. When we've got good light, it is incredible. We've got one bee at the moment. Oh, there's two, another bee. Three, three or four, so we're, we're good for the moment. Um, hopefully we can uh, capture one. So I generally have a, a really good little setting set up here. 95% of the time I'm shooting AFC wide. So in your settings you've got AFC wide, it's using pretty much all of the sensor and it will lock onto the closest thing. If you've got eye autofocus on, it will capture that and it's, it's actually really quite good. But if you go to, if you get your RX10 Mark IV now or uh, anything that is uh, probably RX10 Mark III possibly as well, I'm not sure on the settings on that. But if you go to the menu and you go to the second camera menu, so you see, I think it's purpley color, and you go to page nine and you find custom key shoot if you go into there, click into that one, and you go to page two, right down the bottom is focus hold button, which is actually this button here on the camera. It's the side button. And what we do at the moment, if you left it as it is, it literally just basically locks the focus. It literally just becomes a manual focus. And it won't, it won't focus anything. It just won't move, it'll just lock. Never use it. Uh, I generally toggle between the AEL button as a manual focus, autofocus button. What this allows you to do is if you find, uh, so if you click into there, focus hold button, click into that, and then go to page four and choose the one at the top, which is reg dot AF area plus AF on. Click on that. And that now, basically when you push that button in, will you have to hold it in as well. It will now focus, uh, if you're holding it in, it will focus on a smaller square, basically, or a smaller area. 
So for focusing on bees and flowers, and you know, if you want to go right in the center, it's actually really handy. And it's literally just push the button and it will focus as well. You don't even have to, so it's almost like a back button, focus button. Um, but it makes it a smaller spot, which is really handy. So it means you can go, oh, there's an airplane or there's something in the sky flying to go, oh, there's a bee. And you can literally, or a butterfly or something like that. Or if you want to shoot between grass uh, into things like that, it's a really handy feature. So let's try and find a bee. We are today bright enough that I can shoot ISO 100. And let's have a quick look, see what the exposure's like. Not bad. I can actually get, on this light, I can get the 16 hundredth of a second, which is quite a nice exposure actually, um, with this light. And it's quite constant because there's no clouds in the sky. Now we've just got to find a bee. At the moment, they're at the back of the bush, which is really annoying. We need one up the front here. Uh, the benefit of this camera as well is at 600, we can focus at 72 centimetres, which is a really, really handy feature. If we go back to 24 millimetres, we can literally touch the hood and it will still focus like literally that far away from the front of the lens. So it's a really, really handy ability. The only downside is if I go to say, I don't know, three or 400, it's rubbish. It, it's mid range area at close focus is terrible. But I think that's a bit, that's a, I'd rather have the ability to go close with a 600 than go close with 300, for example. Because all you need to do at 600, just move back a bit if you need to. But it really does give you a good thing. Oops, some kind of black flying bug. Any questions about the RX10 Mark IV or any of the other Sony cameras that you might use and you're stuck or you're new, new to it, please feel free to comment below and ask a question. I shall try my best to help you out. This is really pretty. We've got pink and white flowers all at once. And it's really quite nice. I th they all seem to be changing now. So I think they go pinkish when they're sort of at their best because now they're starting to show this, I think this is where they turn into berries. Maybe they start sprouting berries, I don't know. Um, that's the other benefit of the RX10 is if you're between f2.4 and f6.3, you've got a one one thousandth of a second shutter speed, sync speed with your pop-up flash or, or a flash, which is fantastic. One thousandth of a second sync speed, that's mad. The A1, which I'm shooting on the, the video on, it can do 400. Most of the other cameras out there can maybe can do one between 160 and 200, uh, one two hundredth of a second, something like that. If you then go f8, f8 and above, the sync speed is up to one two thousandth of a second. I'm not really sure why, uh, but it, it just is. I think that's to do with, uh, oh, I know, I've, I've just answered my own question in my brain. The reason it is like that is because the uh, aperture blades are actually your shutter as well, so it's a leaf shutter. So as I as I shut them down a bit more, uh, f8 is much smaller compared to f6.3, f4, f2.4, which is quite wide open. It means that it can actually shut that aperture right down as as the shutter in much less time. So for shooting flash and stuff like that, you can actually shoot at one two thousandth of a second, which is crazy. There's a massive bee up there, or a hornet, possibly. It's up in the tree. Is that a hornet? It's kind of gone. Don't know where. But yeah, it's it's a fantastic bit of kit, and it is. A lot of people think it's going to be rubbish because it's got a one-inch sensor. Far from it. Absolutely far from it. it. Is it produces some seriously sharp images? Yeah, we've got a little bit of limitations on the ISO, but now with the software out there you can it, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference if you shot this with the a1 or this and you know in particular situations you know obviously it's still limited in some respects but most of the time this is all you need and probably people are thinking now why has he got an a1 then and an a7r3 for work purposes i mean i have used this for work but for work purposes i am using different different lenses and, and things like that for particular jobs you know and that's, that's the difference. But if you are an enthusiast or even a professional and you want a camera just to take out with you for the day when you don't want to take 
a six and a half grand camera and a couple of lenses and just a heavy big bulky bag or anything like that you just put this in a bag and take it and you're going to get actually more shots with this camera generally on a day out than you would do with carrying swapping lenses and being having the wrong lens on for that wrong time and all that sort of stuff which uh, is obviously yeah not ideal uh, obviously the only other limitation is you've only got a t getting it absolutely covered it you've only got um, a 24 millimeter so your widest is 24 obviously at the moment I'm shooting on the A1 at 14 so you know you there are benefits and restrictions obviously in things like that so uh, who knows if we'll ever see a, a Mark V we just don't know um, Sony are extremely good at keeping secrets I would imagine there is one sat there somewhere as a prototype um, being tested and things like that and they'll decide if they actually bother making them um, but the RX10 Mark IV is still selling like hotcakes so even five and a bit years down the line five and a half years down the line this camera is still an absolute beast yeah we know the autofocus could do with a bit of a tweak a bigger battery probably a faster processor um, you know double card slots would be nice if they could make it a pro body proper pro body in an all-in-one thing it would sell like you would not believe you know CF Express A cards in here you know I mean this does 20 frames per second you know all day long you know but obviously your buffer does fill up very quickly and then it's quite a slow re uh, write speed which is a shame but when it came out that was probably the fastest that was available you know things move on as we know um, right I'm gonna see if I can find AB um, which is looking quite difficult which is a little bit annoying oh we've got one there so this one's in the shade so now I've just zoomed in I've pushed my middle button uh, my side button and I'm still shooting at 1600 and he's moved where's he gone oh, he's up there sadly he's in the shade again but we can pop the flash up drop it down to a thousandth of a second and that should it's enough yeah it's enough to give me enough light even right up in there the pop-up flash has still fired enough light up in there just to give the the bee just a little punch of light so where it was in the shade and you'll be able to see that in the picture it's very very slightly um, which is good I mean we're keeping the ISO nice and low it's bright out here I'll shoot an f4 he was far enough away that the depth is fine you've still got some bokeh in the background because things fade away quite quickly especially at 600 uh, but yeah just need one here it'd be nice it's very warm though even though even though it's windy it's a quite a pleasant uh, thing hello crow so onto the photos this shot here was one shot taken without the flash popped up shooting through the little loads of leaves and, and petals and things quite a difficult shot to actually get this shot here was with flash uh, so you can see it's slightly brighter but it's also a little bit sharper as well so I could keep my shutter speeds up rather than having to lower my shutter speeds and up my ISO. Uh, damsel flight on a piece of grass there I thought that was quite a nice picture actually nice and sharp and just a really not bad shot. Hoverfly I think these are um, again not a bad shot again you know I haven't got the um, macro attachments or anything this is just straight off the uh, camera and one of the bees there unfortunately lacking so you know due to the wind I think and just the, those flowers I think they've been uh, done and dusted by those bees but here's a bit of slow motion HFR at 500 frames per second and uh, he's fully loaded that one with uh, the old pollen but again it's just a case of getting out there having a bit of a play experimenting and just you know playing around but that uh, setup really does help because you can literally just push up a button you've gone from wide AF to a smaller uh, spot which is more just a center it's not the smallest one you can put because you can set a smaller one but not in that setting so uh, you can have small uh, was it small center spot um, in the other settings on the uh, autofocus but you can't easily swap um, that quickly so <clears throat> having that button on the side really helps I think uh, I use it all the time it's really really helpful and um, yeah it's just 
just a case of experiment guys play play with the camera yourself there's loads of more setting settings you can do just but it's just a case of working out what you want and how you want to use it so anyway don't forget to click the subscribe button little notification bell as well any questions feel free to ask in the comments and uh, i'll see you soon